<laughs> Hello, everybody. Well, welcome to our webinar uh, this afternoon. My name is Dion. Uh, I'm the marketing manager here at Solutions PT. And today we're very excited about Aviva Edge. Um, for a lot of you, it's so most probably something new that we're introducing into uh, our portfolio. And uh, it's really a, a, a well anticipated addition to our portfolio and we're very excited to tell you all about it today and to do that with me today is uh, um, Scott Courtier. I hope I said that right Scott. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I think you're still muted. I'm doing well, thank you Dion, thanks for having me. Okay and I can immediately hear from your accent, you're not from around here, well I don't sound from around here but you certainly don't either, whereabouts are you from? I am based in the United States, uh, based in Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Uh, and and you are the Aviva Edge product manager. Correct. Yep. Okay, great. And then we've got with us as well, uh, all the way from um, now. I forgot your place's name, Andy. Eccles. Oh, Andy's. Andy. No, sorry, Tim. It wasn't you. It was Andy. <laughs> are you talking about my my Starship destroyer, or are you talking about? Limney Warrington. <laughs> <laughs> either, either. Um, so, yeah, how are you doing, Dion? I'm good. Uh, good, good. Thank you, Andy. And Andy is our solutions manager. And then uh, uh, an, another star of our show today is Tim Harrison. Hello, Dion. Hello, Tim. How are you doing today? Very good. Good weather. Nice, nice yes, temperature here. Yes, yes, very nice. And Tim is one of our chief architects, so um, <laughs> will help us gain some insight into uh, Edge today. Well, if we start off, um, just one thing that I think a lot of people should be aware of is that we, we are busy changing our branding. Um, so a lot of you might have heard of Aviva. I know all of you would know all about Wonderware. Well, what is happening is the Wonderware brand is becoming Aviva. So uh, you'll soon not see the Wonderware branding anymore. You'll only see the Viva branding, but under the wood, it's the same old Wonderware that we've trusted for the last um, 30 years. But uh, this webinar is, is, of course, part of our Edge to Enterprise uh, releases that is, that, that is going on at the moment. We've got an 11 week uh, webinar series, of which this is webinar uh, number five. And Andy, will you give us a quick introduction in what this whole uh, um, Edge to Enterprise story is about? Yeah, sure, Dion. Thank you. Um, and also, if anybody's got any questions, there's a Q&A uh, just on your Zoom. If you just pop them in there and we'll, we'll answer them at the end for you. Um, so just to, to make a start, so obviously the um, Aviva Edge forms very much a part of our monitor and control portfolio. And you'll have, you've probably seen these slides before, um, but we ensure that we connect, empower, and transform our customers. Um, so by connect, we connect to whatever devices we're talking out there, and that's no exception when we, we're coming to Aviva Edge. I'm sure Scott will go into some of the detail around that. Um, we empower our, our people um, to, to make smarter decisions. And we, we do that through the technology and the trends and the things that the technology that they, they deploy throughout the, the product portfolio. And Aviva Edge, again, is, is, is one of those products that is really coming to the forefront now. So I'm really excited to introduce this to, to you guys today. And then from a transformation perspective, um, it, it's really about um, creating that smart factory, digitizing your, your factories uh, and going above and beyond. And we do that across every vertical. Um, and we have done for the last 30 years. And this portfolio is, it's, it has number one market share worldwide. Uh, and there's 2 million plus licenses sold, uh, again, worldwide in that regard. Um, if we move on to uh, our edge to enterprise architecture, and it can be very loosely brought down to these three types of locations. So your asset location, your control room or unified operation center, uh, and all the way up to that enterprise. Um, and then what we've done is, is very loosely put the products into these areas. And, and I say loosely because you'll, you'll understand when I, uh, I show you the next slide. Um, but our Aviva Edge, our InTouch HMI sits at this asset location where we're producing the product, getting the products out the door. Um, 
from the control room perspective, we obviously would look to something like our system platform naturally, um, uh, or certainly a unified operations center with something like our operations management interface. Uh, and then all the way up to that enterprise level. So in this case, from an Aviva perspective, we're talking about cloud and, and cloud development, uh, cloud deployment in terms of uh, uh, data uh, and data analytics and we're connected in a, in a multitude of ways uh, and then we obviously from an on-premise perspective we still have to run our systems on hardware so depending on what your requirements are whether they're ip rated whether they're really critical applications that need that fault type of fault tolerance and we um we we supply these types of units for our customers as a you know a a whole holistic approach um, the, the software is tested on these uh, and we ensure that we're delivering the right requirements um, for whatever your needs are uh, but i mentioned that from a a slightly different slant and i've changed the slide nearly every time that we've showed it um, but the reason being is that the edge aviva edge is is a much more functional solution than perhaps people realize and it's really good that we're introducing it today with the likes of scott because um his his depth of knowledge and his his enthusiasm in the product because he's worked with it for such a long time um, just shines through and um really it's much more capable uh, than just an, an edge device and just that machine line side product and what you'll see is very quickly that you can scale that out to a much further uh, solution uh, and all the way up to cloud-based edge management and things like that so this is really coming to the forefront uh, and it, it's a it's a real strong player in our monitor and control portfolio um, and some of the beauty of Aviva taking on these types of products in this this depth and obviously we're, we're introducing lots of HMIs and SCADAs. Um, what they've now done is started to leverage common technologies. So the orchestra graphics that you, you knew of have now changed name to industrial graphics. And there's a very good reason for that because now we get exactly the same environment, but we cross our in, entire portfolio. Um, uh, or in most cases it's here now, in some cases it's, it's just on the horizon. Um, but they're also going to deploy in the in the not too distant future uh, cloud-based management of those graphics. So what that means is, if I developed a graphic in Aviva Edge by using the same environment I'm used to, I could then save that off to the cloud, and then actually I'm going to use Aviva Intouch for a different solution or move up to something like Aviva Oh My, and I can pull that latest graphic and use all the same standards down in that product instead. It means I'm getting exactly the same look and feel across the entire um, you know, the entire enterprise. Um, and it's a real differentiator that Aviva have introduced this type of uh, solution into this. Uh, I don't know any other, other player out there that has this common graphical library that allows you to, to save off to the cloud. So it's really exciting news. And it even extends out to that um, SciTech SCADA or, or uh, as it formerly was known. And now we're moving on to uh, Aviva Plant SCADA with that name in transition. Um, but I think that's probably enough for me. So what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll hand you over to Scott for the exciting stuff and he can take us through uh, the details of Aviva Edge. Andy, thank you. Dion, thank you. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your day. Uh, I know uh, personally that uh, time is, is uh, a precious commodity these days. Uh, and, and we hope to give you some really good information uh, to help you make some decisions on, on some products that, that can ultimately save you time, help you uh, create a better product faster and cheaper with higher quality. That's that's the goal here. Um, what uh, you know, what Andy was showing earlier, that whole edge to enterprise. This is this slide is a very similar uh, slide, just shown with a, a couple of different uh, ideas here. So if we start at the bottom and and think of instrumentation, controllers, sensors, basically down at that that level. And that could be pump controls, uh, valve or motor controls, but it doesn't have to be at that low, low, low level. It could be a whole machine, for example, could be that, that you know, kind of edge uh, level thing. And what we're talking about is, is running on equipment that is very scalable. And that could be, you know, from networking devices, that could be uh, a Raspberry Pi, if, if you so choose, that could be a uh, an Advantech uh, PC, could be a, a Stratus piece of hardware, uh, and then getting that information not only in from the, the, the raw field devices, 
but uh, doing that data acquisition, but not only that, but doing data manipulation. And what I mean by that is filtering, contextualizing, and getting that information into the, uh, the, the format that's best to then get up to an analytical platform. In our case, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, Aviva Insight and getting that information into a, a usable format. Now, what I often will, will put out here is, is uh, the idea of it's great to collect the data, but then you need to feed that back into the system and learn from that, take you know, intelligent actions and be able to feed that back into the system. So that's, that's what we're talking about with this product. Now, in order to do that, uh, we've got three main, three main kind of focus points. The portability, or what I'll often call scalability, uh, meaning that this product, this Aviva Edge product, can run not only on a Windows desktop environment, can be on a server class machine as well, uh, could be on a Windows embedded uh, operating system, Windows CE, or even Linux. And I'll talk a bit more about this, but often without making any changes to the project whatsoever. So that scalability has some inherent benefits for you. The mobility part of this, we, we actually have several different, uh, what we call thin clients. Now these are software thin clients, but the really nice thing is they're built on HTML5, or the, one of the three are built on HTML5, so that you can view and optionally interact with your, your project via cell phones, uh, tablets, desktops, uh, just using a, a standard browser. And this includes Apple products, uh, uh, you know, iPads, uh, as well as Mac uh, on, on Safari. And, and, and really what we're talking about there is it makes uh, your operators more efficient. Whether you're in a manufacturing environment, a process environment, uh, it, you know, it used to be maybe you had 10 machines uh, and, and you had 10 operators standing by at each one. It's not the case anymore. It's, it's uh, you have 10 machines, you probably got two or three operators and one roaming maintenance staff. So by using this, this thin client idea, you can help them be in the right place at the right time or, or understand the priorities. The interoperability uh, of this product, this third layer here, is, is really one of the core features of this product. Unlike some of our competitors that only let you uh, uh, have two or three drivers and then everything else you must use OPC, we have over 200 built-in drivers. And, it, and not only for PLCs, but things like motion, vision, temperature control, RFID, barcode, including robots. And it goes way beyond uh, just drivers. We, ha we do have OPC. We have OPC, uh, UA and DA, server and client. We have the ability to talk to databases, cloud type devices. Uh, if you haven't heard of MQTT, you will, you will be hearing of that uh, much more, not only from us. And one of the things that this product has is, is, first of all, this was brought into Aviva through an acquisition. And this product has been available for for more than 20 years, and the the compatibility that we have, it's 100% compatible. Before I was an employee, I was actually a customer, and uh, uh, I deployed a project that had over 300 screens, used animation, uh, uh, database connectivity, security, et cetera, and that customer came back to us recently and said, hey, I want to use some of your new trending tools. How big of a pain in the rear end will it be? He said, no, no pain, no actual conversion. You just bring it in and it works. Uh, again, unlike some of our competitors that force you to reinvent the wheel every three years, that's, a, uh, I think, a welcome thing for, uh, for you, for your time, because that's kind of your own personal product. Um, I like to show this slide and show that we're in many different vertical markets, but why do you care if, if any of these markets are not what you're in? I like to point out, for example, in the U.S., we have a, uh, a government standard, of, uh, uh, we call it 21 CFR Part 11 for traceability and trackability. I like to bring up that we use that to put features in the product. I'm going to switch slides here. Uh, because this product is very comprehensive, meaning we get feedback from different industries and we tend to put those in as standard features. You install the product once, you just get all the features. There's very, very few things that you need to purchase extra. In fact, out of the box, first install, you get everything for a complete HMI or complete SCADA or industrial Internet of Things uh, solution. One so of the big... Just, sorry, yeah. just to interrupt you. Is there, so it, it's really for taking that 20 years of legacy that we have with Aviva Edge and you know, giving that to everybody, making that available to, to every one of our customers. Yeah, yeah. What, what it, you know, the big benefit there is, is your time, right? You, when, you, when you've developed a project 
and uh, the, your software supplier changes architecture on you and forces you to redo your project. We don't want you to do that. We want you to keep going and learn and, and, and improve instead of starting over. Uh, so that's, that's one of the big points. Thanks, Dan. So on, on, on this slide, uh, uh, I want to just briefly talk about the uh, first time users kind of generally will create a very custom project. And as you learn and you grow, you'll start to build in templates and, and you know, reusability, if you will. But one of the key points of this product is the ability to create a project on the fly. A, a project can self-create itself, if you will. You can create and import screens, trends, recipes, drivers. You can add and remove tags. So as people learn from this, they end up deploying an application instead of programming it. Take it on site and configure it for the location as opposed to customizing it and programming it. Very, very key benefit uh, uh, for this product. Uh, I like to bring up that um, we, we have an abstraction to some of the different components of this. So with Aviva Edge here in the core of this, you're gonna be talking to uh, different hardware platforms. If you're not happy with the price point or the quality and you want to switch to, uh, uh, for example, a, a product that uh, Solutions PT carries, you want to switch to an Advantech PC or a Stratus uh, uh, solution, you can do that. We don't, we don't limit you to a hardware platform. As well as um, PLCs, we allow you to switch different PLCs and, and make it very easy to do that, as well as databases uh, as, as well. Now there's several different components to this. You have a development ID, IDE, which we call Studio, and that allows you to deploy for different runtimes. As I mentioned, whether it's on uh, Windows, uh, Windows Embedded CE or Linux, often with little or no changes. So if you're a machine builder, that offers you the ability to um, offer a mid-level, kind of entry-level price point, a high-end and a low-end, again, without changing your project. Uh, so again, making that very, very scalable. Uh, I want to stick on this slide for just a minute here, um, not only communicating to PLCs of, of every brand that you can imagine, but um, having multiple of those. We, we don't license limit you to the number of PLCs or, or drivers that you can have connected. So we can act as a gateway between different brands of PLCs. We can uh, pull the information into Aviva Edge and get it into OPC to and from the internet, to and from databases. And notice all of these arrows are bi-directional. So you can share from any of these sources and send to any of these destinations. Uh, incredibly powerful when you when you <laughs> need to communicate with that device that eh, maybe nobody else can or or you know if you're a machine builder why have or or a system integrator why have different HMIs depending on the PLC brand that you use stick with one HMI keep that consistent and common. The next thing is uh, we've added in the the latest version um, the ability to do what's called the Viva Edge management. And while we have a remote deployment tool in the product, this Aviva Edge Management is something that you can deploy via the cloud and keep hundreds or thousands of projects updated out in the field in a very intelligent way, uh, very easy to use way too. And, and in fact, uh, our, our demos take uh, less than 60 seconds to deploy a project out in the field. And for those of you who are doing a bigger architecture, as, as Andy mentioned, uh, could be up to system platform. We have a tool built into the product called the ITME View App Object. This will allow you to get data, historical uh, information and alarms up into system platform through that object. But in addition to that, we can use Spark Plug B, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, MQTT Spark Plug B, or even OPC UA as well. We have import sorry, wizards. Scott, can I yeah. interrupt you there for a second? Yeah. On, the, on the previous slide, I think the thing that stands out for me there is that is the flexibility in in Aviva Edge to work in in either a on-premise traditional networked WAN LAN environment, but it can just as well work in a completely IoT cloud-based. Uh, environment which really gives you the best of both worlds and you can use a combination a hybrid between the two you're absolutely right the the the, the flexibility of the architectures that you can deploy of Eva edge is is often astounding to me <laughs> and I and I help manage the product it, it can be deployed as a local HMI it can be deployed as a Internet of Things kind of endpoint solution it can be a server 
It could be a local facility. It could be even deployed in the cloud. If you go to, if you just Google for Aviva Edge, um, on our on our homepage is a live demo that's hosted in um, Amazon Web Services, and you can just call that, do it. I encourage you to do that. Just call that up on your phone and uh, take a look at that that demo. So again, yeah, good, great point, Dion. Very very flexible architecture there. We have several uh, import wizards, and for many of you, we'll, we'll have run into uh, Rockwell's Factory Talk. We can bring those projects into Aviva Edge, but what's really nice is then they become an actual Aviva Edge project, so you can then leverage the tools and advancements that we have to, to, to make your project even better in Aviva Edge. So one real quick thing that I want to uh, get get accomplished before we, we hand things over to Tim is the licensing. We've recently restructured the, the tag counts and the levels to make it more flexible, more compatible uh, 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 for competitors you know, that, that may have different licensing levels. We can go down as low as 150 tags and as high as unlimited tags and, and get the same feature set across those. So very flexible, very competitive. And again, depending on the hardware that you run on, you can, you can get the price and performance for what you need to be able to sell to your customers as well. So some key takeaways, uh, again, everything you need is installed, very easy to use, uh, very flexible and open. We build in open standards so that if we don't have the tool, you can get to the right tool. Uh, and again, sustainable and affordable, depending on how you want to deploy the, the, the project and, and where you want to position those funds, whether it's CapEx or OpEx, uh, it's kind of your choice. So uh, with that, Tim, I think I'm going to hand things over to you. And uh, why don't you go ahead and take things away? That's great. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Scott. And uh, again, hello from, from me. Just share the screen. Hopefully you've, um, you're getting the... Uh, the uh, my screen there, Dion. We've got it, Tim. Yeah. Lovely stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a walk through an edge, and um, I will say this: that it's there's a, there's so much that one can explore and uh, and accomplish with an edge. So, I'm really kind of scratching the surface uh, with what I want to show you, but but it's to give you a little bit of a feel for for some of the steps that you would normally do as a starter you know, getting, getting familiar with edge, um, before, before obviously going, getting into that, as Andy was saying, industrial graphics is now available inside the Aviva edge. And first and foremost, you, you have the ability to import obviously these libraries, which is the traditional graphic library, as well as the situational awareness library, but nothing is stopping you from obviously creating new libraries of your um, of your own within the other let's say the other products or even in this product and so, so basically Tim, sorry to, to interrupt you there so it means you can take from in touch you could take from system platform and you could use that same graphics all all across here as well that's right dion so so these are the ones that are, are shipped with the product and these are the same libraries that um exist in the other Aviva portfolio products. Uh, what I'm saying is that if you do have a system platform or in touch or um, to be obviously plant SCADA, you can be creating obviously your own industrial graphic symbols, creating those inside of a library, export that library, which is a AAPKG file, and then just simply coming in and importing that. So as you know, you're not, you're not sort of um, losing those symbols in, 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 a, in the libraries that are already here, it will just create a new library for you, you know, so it becomes a lot easier to find those, those symbols because they contained within that library. And I'm, I'm going to use at least one symbol, maybe two in, in, in this uh, walkthrough. So um, with that, um, what I'm going to do is basically start off with a, uh, a sandbox mimic. Now, I, I, I already created this little face plate. Um, and the reason for that is because I've kind of um, already sized, sized it to be HD wide and uh, not quite the full height. I've actually offset it by 100 pixels because I have a little menu bar that I'll be showing through my, um, through my demo. But the first thing I'm going to do is just take a rectangle from obviously a quite a host of options that you have. You know, there was a slide in, in Scott's presentation. Um, and like I said, really scratching the surface here because there's so much you can get from ActiveX controls and .NET controls and the likes. But when I double click on this bar graph with Aviva Edge, um, 
I can basically come in and actually attach any of these sort of animations that you see here. So I can sort of uh, put a bar graph um, into this rectangle. I can also change the visibility or the position um, of this bar graph. All of that is, is kind of very easy to just add and remove um, what you really need. Um, and if I just stick with the bar graph, um, to get an, a tag expression, I don't really need to look in the database. I mean, clearly, if I have a large, a large database and I need to be specific, but you might be creating this on the fly. So for me, I'll create a tag on the fly and press enter and Edge already tells you this doesn't exist. Would you like me to create this tag for you? And you say yes. And it kind of uh, puts it as an integer. You can assign a description. It can be part of an array if you so wish. And I can just accept that. I am going to change the uh, scale because I'd like to link this to a PLC uh, or to at least a, a simulator. Um, and that's, that's done. That is my bar graph. For me to interact with this bar graph, I'd like to use one of the symbols that we get one of many symbols from the actual um, Aviva Edge library. So you've got actually a flavor of three libraries, essentially. You've got the Aviva Edge symbols, you've got the industrial graphic library, and you've got the situational awareness library. Um, so I'll click a, um, a slider. I click that, go back to my, and plonk it on. Um, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna resize this um, for that. Uh, there's, you can obviously be ex extremely uh, um, exact with with the ability to actually position this bar graph along the coordinates as well as obviously the height and the width so you know really when, when it comes down to getting the exact pixel it's quite easy to do i'll just quickly configure the the slider so i double click on that and i want to link it to the um temperature so i'm not going to type the name here i'm actually going to just double click it opens up a object finder and I'm going to look for that temperature tag that I created just a moment ago and click that in. Um, I'll change the, the min and max as well to match um, for that. So is that done? Will this work? I'm just going to, I'm just going to press the play button. So I'm going to just close that down and say, save, close that down. And I'm going to run my project. Um, I've got a little output screen that sort of, is happy to let me know what uh, what screens it's saved, um, what it's busy finalized. Um, so I'll just wait for that screen to pop up. Oh, there we go. So this is my little top menu that I had sort of created um, beforehand with a little bit of navigation and uh, a date time. But if I just come in and move the slider, you know, it really is um, quite straightforward, but I'm not gonna stop there. I'd like to take this one bit st step further and add an alarm window and add a trend window for this. So let me just come out of there. Um, by the way, one thing I do like about Aviva Edge is that you don't have to shut down the runtime when doing configuration changes. Everything is done live. And as I'm adding symbols to the runtime, they, are, they will be appearing on those, on those screens. Um, I did shut it down there, but I mean, I could have just left it open. So, First things first, I'd like to just add an alarm. I'd like to just alarm that, that tag. So that tag, um, temperature, I'm going to open up a little alarm um, box and I appreciate in the interest of time, I don't want to uh, spend too much time going maybe too nitty gritty, um, but each of these alarm um, configurations allow you to sort of preset the colors for the activation, the acknowledgement. Um, you can obviously configure some of the um, alarms going to history or the online settings, even emailing it to you, to yourself um, or to, to other people. So and emailing just, is automatically included. That's right. There is a, there is a feature to um, link to both an exchange server or to a pop server. So I'd uh, done a, a previous test using my uh, Yahoo account, um, configured it, into the project here. And then you can just enable the automatic emailing and it will use those settings to authenticate the username and password and then send it out to those, those people. I'll just put a, a quick text here. Just put it too high. Um, yep, 
happy with that. And then what? Tim, Tim, I'm going to interrupt you for just a second here. One of the great things about this this uh, worksheet is where you just typed temperature is too high. You can actually inside of curly brackets embed a str a, a tag of any type, and that will show up in the message as well. And where this comes in as a benefit is you don't need to manage your your uh, alarm messages in two different places. You can you can keep them in the PLC if that's where you like to do them, and then um, push them through this uh, tag mechanism, and then not have to manage your messages in two different places. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Yep. I'm going to quickly keep it uh, running now. I'm going to actually run the project so that I can start making changes um, on the fly rather than having to shut down. Um, so I'm going to uh, bring that down to zero and I'm going to put in a alarm graphic on the screen. So I go back to my graphic screen, go to my sandbox, um, coming into the into the draw and I've got a alarm and event window here. So I drag that out. Um, there are obviously um, a lot of settings you can change. You can ask for alarm history, alarm and events, just events, all just the online. Um, you can come down to, you know, sort of customize the interaction that the user would have with this alarm window, um, including adding and uh, removing certain columns that, that would suit the um, suit your requirement. But I'll just save that because I wanted to demonstrate that once it's saved and I go back to my runtime mimic, this is exactly what I said. Basically, that that window has appeared. No, no recompiling, no sort of um, anything to do but to add the tag. And as you can see, I took it over um, a value and like Scott said, in the curly brackets, it's reporting the um, the temperature as and when I move that slider and let go of it. So, so yeah, I mean, that was what, maybe three minutes of just adding a, a rectangle and a, and a slider. I'm now going to, what would be good is just to add now, a, 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 you know, log that value. So I'm going to go back into, um, into tasks, go into my trend logger, and I'm going to create a new, I'm going to insert a new table. The description is very much, you know, just an optional, but I'm just going to say a temperature to SQL. Um, so there is, there is three, maybe even four ways you can log data uh, in, in, a, in edge. One is to the proprietary file format to its own, its own uh, repository where it's just saving the, the data in its flat files. You can link Aviva Edge to Aviva Historian. You could um, send it to Aviva Insight, which is the cloud-based historian, um, or you can say, take the value straight to SQL, uh, which I'm now going to just demonstrate now. So I select database. I have pre-configured a ODBC connection to a SQL, a SQL database called Edge that I've got currently um, on my local node, which I'll be using. And it's going to create a uh, table for me called Trend 4, Trend 004, uh, when, I, when I obviously complete this. I need to put a tag into this that I want sending to that, so it will be temperature. And importantly, I, I, on this occasion, I just want to save the, um, the tag on change as opposed to on second. Because if I had to do that every second, it's going to log the temperature value, whether it's changed or not, to... Um, to the SQL database and I'd rather, you know, try and keep it concise so it's easy to see what's actually happening. Um, so I can save that now. Save it as sheet four. Tim, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in on, on you one more time is just to, for clarification, you don't have to have a trend as time-based. We just happen to do default as the seconds clock for an update, but you could put end of cycle of machine, uh, whatever your, again, it doesn't have to be time-based, so it, it can be triggered on any event. Okay, excellent. I mean, and, and this, you don't need any data, I mean, you don't need to be a database guru to do this, it's just anybody. R right, one of the nice things is we handle all the SQL behind the scenes, so if you don't know SQL, don't, don't fret. Right, doesn't, right. Doesn't not... I think that's a key thing, because if you look at other stuff, they normally require you some scripting that you need to do, and this is, this is just easy. 
It's extremely easy, uh, especially that that part. Uh, we were just talking um, not too long ago um, about using SQL, you know, Edge to SQL, and it's just really uh, quite refreshing when you can have this have this configured with not actually having to use SQL SQL queries to do it. Although, having said that, there is a library of SQL functions that you've got available to you in Edge. Yeah, so if you if you need the power, it's there as well. It's there as well. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to. Um, even though I'm, I'm logging to SQL, I can still use the runtime, um, just a trend window, temperature. Okay, so your trend can get data either from the SQL database or from its native one or from anywhere else. If, if, if you're not historizing a tag, it will just treat it as a, as a sort of live window. You know, so if you're, not, if you're not logging it to its proprietary file, does that make sense? Yeah. Yep, okay. And let's save that window there. Um, so I'm just going to go back in here and the trend window is there. I'm obviously going to be going up. And what's, what's more important is that I'm going to now ask, well, I'm going to go either go into SQL and actually show you where this data data is residing. So if I... So, so Tim, I think you had a mistake that I make all of the time yep. is you didn't save your trend worksheet. Therefore, that's why your trend wasn't updating. I don't know if you uh, noticed that. <laughs> right. I did. I did wonder that. I did wonder if I was going <laughs> to. Um, but I did want to just come into the into the edge database here in the SQL and actually just query this this table. And uh, it has it has started to um, that's today's date. Yep. Um, ah, it is actually logging data into here from the values that I've got currently and vice versa. I can actually pull back a data window, an actual grid window from, from the, uh, from the actual SQL database as well. I'll just move those things over. So I need to actually tick the worksheet. Onto that. Oh, I just wanted to yeah, add. So the, the, the trend for worksheet at the top, if you, if you save that or close that, um, Ah, right. Okay. And the, uh, under the trend. Uh, the, on the top yeah, side. The, yeah. Right, right above where you're Yeah, right there. Just save that. Close that now. Right. And, um, uh, in this case, you might have to restart the project to get that to take effect. Right. Okay. I'll just quickly, I'll do this as well. So I'm just going to uh, link to, uh, date time. So what I'm doing here, I'm just using a grid. To look at the the tags that are sitting in the data that stayed here that's actually been stored in the SQL. So as you can see here, the column is time underscore stamp, and the column there is temperature. And all I need to do is um, uh, apologies. If, um, you you, uh, you have to change the the data source to database. Database. Yeah. Yep. Yep. One above that. that. There yep. you go. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I did this. I knew I did this. Timestamp must be the the nice warm weather that's happening and temperature. Okay, there we go. Okay, and that should probably conclude the table and the and the thing. Oh, okay. I need to. I have made a mistake. I probably have. I'll restart the machine. This is what we get on live demos. I was talking about this the other day. Let's try it down. What I am going to do after this is I had actually done a lot of this on a different screen. Um, oh, sorry. Let me just close down that again. I need to, what's happened is because I've hit play while I've done that, it doesn't, um, didn't start up my whole start group. Tim, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some feedback here. So so go back into your grid object. Yep. And then so so I would say stop it. Go back into the grid object. You missed one slight thing. It's because you didn't choose the text uh, the database instead of the text file at first. You missed the configuration for the. So go into data source settings. One above. Mm -hmm. There you go. And we've got that. And change that. Uh, uncheck use default name. Yep. There. And then pull that down. And then pick your trend zero zero four. Right. And click OK. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, it tries to default to the project name, and and because uh, it doesn't know what data you want, so th that sh that should work now. Oh, cheers for that. Thanks, Scott. See, this is why it's so handy having you on this with us today. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, and there you're right. So it's pulling the data straight out of that uh, out of that table.
Thanks, is God. Trend, is the trend it. just a scale? Because it's only showing zero to 100. So, <laughs> yeah, your temperature is actually 450 because it is reporting the right value. Right, yes. Right, so, right, so, right. So, I'll tell you what you can do. Uh, Tim, at the top, the, yeah. uh, uh, in the runtime. Oh, okay. In the runtime, uh, at the top icons, the third one in from the right is two arrows pointing up and down. Keep going over, farther, 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 farther. Oh, uh, there. Right there. That'll auto scale. And because you didn't put the scale in, yep. uh, it didn't know how to uh, how to react. So you can auto scale, and it will it will figure out what data you have as the min and max, and right. figure that out. Or you can change the scale during runtime as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, no, I really appreciate the feedback. Thanks, guys. Um, all that's left now is to just um, I'm going to link this tag. So instead of being on a slider manually changing, I'm just going to link it to a simulator. So for me to do that, I have a Modbus simulator running here. Um, so I'm just going to go into the communication settings. Uh, I'll close that down. We don't need you anymore. Uh, and obviously, as Scott also interluded to, is there's a, a whole host um, of drivers that come with the Aviva Edge product. Um, one of them being obviously MQTT, which you can see there, and others as uh, UA and DA are listed on the side here as well. I already have um, added a Modbus TCP driver to this to this project, and all I really want to do is just kind of add that temperature tag that I added earlier, and just um, sort of link it to this table. Obviously, when you're first starting out, you're not sure of the syntax, you're not sure of what is supposed to be written or how is it supposed to be written, um, and it is quite easy then to access the communication driver help within Edge and select the, the driver that you're interested in. In my case, it's Modbus, the Modbus TCP, and hit the help. And you'll get a PDF document opening up that allows you to then scroll, scroll through to where it talks about setting up the, um, the addressing. And it will help you understand what it, what it expects. I'll just go down and there we go. There's the IP address. And then it talks about the coils and the holding registers and the input registers that you can do it. So it's got a great documentation or help help file on that. Tim, another quick interruption. One of the reasons why the manuals are separate uh, for the drivers from the, from the help is the drivers are actually independent from the runtime. So if you have to validate your drivers or validate your project, you can actually keep an older version of driver in a newer version of runtime or vice versa. You can actually put a newer driver in an older version of runtime. So they are truly independent and, and that interface for most of the drivers, uh, they are independent from the runtime. And that, that gives you a lot of flexibility. Oh, okay. That's excellent. The, the other thing as well is now, I've now added that tag. Um, with Edge, there's a, there's a watch window here. Um, where you can actually um, have a look at what your tag is currently reading. So I've actually just put temperature there. So if I'm reading it there, I'm more than likely going to be getting that that update now happening on my on my HMI. So it's just bottomed out to zero. It'll probably start cycling upwards now. And there we go. So that was again, you know, without with a few little hiccups here and there. It's a uh, certainly quite easy to link up a tag to, you know, an actual Aviva Edge tag to a, to a simulator or PLC. Um, I was just thinking, of, okay, so that's, that's from putting a symbol, a sort of a Aviva Edge symbol. I'd like to now just take an opportunity to create a, a, a industrial graphic screen. So I come to my screens, I right click and I say insert industrial graphic screen. All the other screens have been using just the insert. So I insert an industrial graphic. Um, again, I uh, change it to suit my, my application. So I've just got 100 pixels of a menu and I'm going to offset that by 100 pixels. Um, I can give it a title bar, but I can just click OK and it's going to open a symbol screen. And then for those uh, participants or um, people on the webinar who are actually used to the system platform, the InTouch, this is now very, very familiar. This is the uh, graphics graphics editor window that you normally get to. And from here, you've got the 
industrial graphic um, browser that you can come through and I can pick from a whole multitude of both situational awareness or any libraries that have actually been imported uh, into and then of course come down modify the custom properties and where it asks for value um, I can just start typing and it will start to look for any tag or um, function that's inside the uh, inside the software so it's temperature I'm interested in I press OK I'll just see what um, sorry I just want to see what um, min max that was um, yep brilliant I'll, I'll be, I'm happy with that and save and close uh, so it's saved as screen one ah right so I actually I just wanted to save as HTML and I will just run that in fact I'll take it one step further in my menu I'll just modify this to open up screen one so this is the open command and I'll just type in in quotation marks the name of the the name of the screen hit save and um, I just want to make sure that my menu comes up so I can click the industrial graphic And there's my, so that's now my industrial graphic, giving me a reading of 4024, 3945. And of course I can switch back to my actual reading that I, you know, my screen that I had already. Uh, the, the only other thing I want to touch on, um, like I said, there's probably lots to talk on, but just the fact that um, VivaEdge obviously is a ActiveX and, and .NET uh, container, is that I can uh, have my uh, sort of a viva historian client trend i can you know create a screen put in the net control um and uh, and be saving my and be saving my sort of or logging my value my tags to the viva historian and then obviously coming in and using the client tools to basically analyze and, and fault find you know the uh, the data so with that, guys, I mean, I, I, there may be something I've left out or something you would like to talk about, but from my perspective, that's that sort of wraps up this, this demo. Okay, thanks for the quick introduction. I think it's back to you again, Scott. Oh, thank you. Uh, Tim, great job. Uh, uh, you know, one of the things that, that uh, through what Tim was showing is you have to think about the, the round trip of the data. He was able to uh, have a driver pull that data in, show it on a trend, uh, log it to a database, as well as um, uh, get that information then back from the database or historically show it uh, in that grid. Uh, so again, round trip being able to, to get that information Manipulate it, send it, uh, and and retrieve it if you if you need to. So, uh, Tim, great job. Um, uh, I'm, Thanks. Thanks. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did that. I just got to sit here and drink a glass of water every once in a while. Was, uh, nice. I certainly valued the uh, the input. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, what I'm going to show you here is included with the the product. When you install Aviva Edge, you get this demo, and this is the same demo that I mentioned before that's on our website. If you just go to again, just Google Aviva Edge. From the, from the homepage, you can see live demo, and you can call this up on our phone or a tablet. But this, uh, this will show you uh, the feature set um, that we have, and this shows you pretty much all the features that we have. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's so, uh, such a feature complete product, and uh, the ability to have, for example, animations, uh, active objects, recipes, reports, trends, uh, alarming, and, and this goes, you know, you, you can see some of the basic stuff that, that Tim did, but this then takes you a little bit more advanced. So for example, if I trigger some alarms in here and uh, get some high limit alarms, so here you can see in the, the historical, which is saved uh, to a database, I, I've got two his, uh, high type alarms and several low type. But, you know, if you get hundreds or thousands of alarms and, and you need to try to understand what was the one that kicked off what was the cause 
versus the symptoms, you have the ability to come in here and filter and say, hey, I want to see what did, uh, what did Joe cause at midnight? Uh, you know, what was his problem? So here I'm going to filter on high limit alarms and it'll get rid of all the things I don't want to see and be able to see the things that I just want to see. So again, very, very capable. And if you have, for example, if you have multi-touch uh, uh, hardware involved, and I haven't tried this in a long time because I do have a touch screen here, I can put my fingers on the different fingertips here and show that we can independently uh, have multiple touch zones on the, the screen. So you can do things like rotating this knob uh, and I, I have to do this with two fingers. I can't do this with one finger. So a little bit of a protection there. I can scroll and pinch and zoom and in on things and I can swipe to change pages. Um, but then also we have some industry type applications in here, whether you want to stay with that kind of situational awareness theme where it's kind of subdued colors and only show a problem when there's a problem. You can keep with that kind of low color scheme, but then you can get fancy if you want to. And here we've got some 3D CAD views that we've we've brought in and, and added on top of. But uh, you know, while we tend to use this as a sales tool, I'd like to encourage you to use this as a um, as a technical reference, so to speak. So if you want to see how did they do something, how did they uh, uh, switch between languages? So let's say maybe you know. Uh, uh, many of us are familiar with English, but it doesn't have to be. You know, if you're a global company and shipping product all over the world, we can handle Unicode fonts. So it'll handle different languages, even in the kind of non-Roman character sets uh, to be able to handle uh, Japanese and Russian, Cyrillic, et cetera. Let me put this back to English so I can see uh, what's going on here. So uh, the, one of the last things I want to point out is there's several different templates in here. There's a packaging template for PacML. There's an OEE template. And we actually have a, a, a newer and improved template over this. But again, steal this, take from this, learn from this uh, to be able to switch different machines and get at different uh, overall equipment effectiveness data. Uh, understand what your machine's doing when it's down and fix those. And you don't have to add additional resources to get higher throughput and higher quality product. Drill back into by day, week, month, year. And another thing that this product does extremely well is uh, overhead and on or production monitoring. This product will do as small as uh, 240 by 240 pixels and as large as 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. And if you do the math, that's 45 high def monitors in a huge video wall. Um, I, I can see Andy laughing there. Um, uh, I've never seen something 45 monitors, but I have seen eight. 70 inch monitors tied together. It was huge. In fact, the guys that were testing it, uh, they had it hung uh, from the, the, the rafters via a crane. Uh, they would lower it down at the end of the day and they would play life-size Super Mario Brothers on this thing. So it was, it was great, but you could see the display. You could see the information from literally hundreds of meters away. You know, the, the numbers and the characters were, were almost a meter tall uh, individually. So uh, you know, really, again, great flexibility in this. So I, again, uh, I'd like to point out uh, very flexible on what you can do with this, different architectures, and uh, uh, steal from this. Again, use it as a technical reference. Deanne, do I have a couple more minutes to uh, show some more stuff, or do you want to open it up for some questions? Yeah, let's, I think we're coming, our time is getting close, so let's, let's quickly handle some questions. So I'm going to start just uh, reading the questions, and then whoever feels that they must probably, Scott, because you're the, the most, most probably uh, the longest user of Edge here. Uh, the first one, well, the first one is very generic. Uh, where does Edge sit with InTouch and Orchestra now? Okay, so system platform, and I'm assuming this means, you know, how do we position it with in touch and system platform? I think Andy, that first slide of yours that you showed our positioning of it, maybe refer yeah, back to it, that. Yeah, it does a bit. Um, I've seen Scott's answered um, one of the questions there already, um, which is, is is a nice way of putting it. So if you wanna you wanna jump in, Scott, and just just refer that. Yeah. So there was a. <laughs> There was a similar question that came up that uh, asked about positioning. And essentially, over the years, as InTouch kind of grew up, uh, not only in features and price and performance, it left a gap kind of 
under in touch uh, for the HMI space for and now for the uh, industrial Internet of Things space and and edge fills that gap. So again, as as in touch kind of grew up over the years, it feature price performance, it left a space below and then in touch is kind of above that in a supervisory role. So I think I think that explains the, the positioning of it. Yeah. And then you mentioned that system platforms, it's above all of that. Yeah, and and that was on the, the one slide that you had, but I know we went through things kind of uh, quickly. Yeah, I know we had a lot to cover. <laughs> yeah, and I think and I think the crucial thing is here is you know this is our job is uh, uh, that we really have a solution speed team. And that's why why our name is Solutions is we can help you look at your circumstances and help you to find what of our portfolio is going to work best. Um, so it's not a one size fits all. It is what works best for your situation. Uh, next one is around, uh, so where does H, oh, I think I just clicked the wrong thing there. Oh no, I didn't. Is all the scripting inside of industrial graphics supported, such as show graphic? Show graphic is supported. Most of the functions are supported. There's a handful of things we weren't able to fit into the 2020 release, but most of the, the quick scripting is, is supported. Okay, great stuff. Uh, we are interested in monitoring manufacturing machine tools and robots using data provided from the built-in sensors. How do you connect to different machine tool controls for NUC, Siemens, uh, Haas, Haydn, Hein, Mazatrol, etc.? So, so for several of those, we have built-in drivers included. So we've got uh, FANUC robots. In fact, I live uh, about 10 minutes away from the FANUC uh, robot uh, uh, and CNC headquarters in, in the U.S. Um, but uh, also we have the MT Connect driver as well. So that's used in the machine tool industry. In fact, uh, I was stationed in the MT Connect uh, booth a couple of years ago showing this product. Uh, so lots of different ways. So either through direct drivers, through MT Connect, uh, through OPC, many, many different ways. And then if, if we don't have a driver for something, uh, a specific driver, we have a driver called TXRX. It stands for transmit and receive, where you can write your own little kind of simple protocol if you, if you know the, uh, the end result. Okay, next one is how does the licensing work if you need to increase the number of tax? For example, if you change for 150 to 300 tax, do you have to buy a new 300 tax license, throw away the 150 tax license, or is there upgrade option? We, we try to make it easy for you. So uh, first of all, we don't penalize you uh, for, for choosing a lower tag count, and we understand that you'll want to do that for, for pricing reasons. Um, we make it easy. Um, you can field upgrade the license. You just pay the difference in the in the uh, the, the license and, and again field upgrade that. So we, we make it easy in two different ways. Uh, other questions that we have, I think you've answered this one. Why would you use this over system platform or something different? And I, are you happy that? Yeah, you've I think we've covered that. that. The other one that you answered as well, Scott, around any plans to have RS View 32 as an import to Edge. Yeah, so what we did is we skipped over the RS View 32 import. Uh, so we have a panel builder 32 import and uh, factory talk import tool. And again, we skipped over the RS view, but uh, in, in RS view 32 in, in the Rockwell tools, uh, I believe using factory talk, you can actually import a, an RS view 32 project and, and make it a uh, factory talk where then you can use our factory talk import tool. So we do have a mechanism and a way to do that. Okay. And that was one of the things that Rockwell did. Again, the, there's, there's a, a, a scenario where you have three different products with three different technologies and have to have why do all that? Just have one that works yeah. always. Yeah. Well, okay. We, we've got one minute left of our time. So I think uh, it's time for us to wrap up. We, we try to pack as most as we can into this webinar today. Um, and you now the stuff that I've learned is that this, this, H, uh, this Viva Edge uh, HMI SCART is really a powerful tool that we have now available to us as part of our uh, portfolio. Andy didn't have time to talk about our flex licensing, which allows you actually to buy credits and then decide which part of the portfolio you want to use instead of having to commit yourself to just using Edge. Or a lot of you ask that question about should I choose Edge? Should I choose System Platform? Well, you don't have to. Buy the credits and then you can use what is appropriate to your uh, 
um, situation. So very powerful tools today. Scott, thank you very much for joining us all the way from the USA. Just before you go, uh, when you do use Edge, it gives you 40 hours of demo time, which is really useful. It's real demo time. It, once you close down Edge, it doesn't count up. It's great to get to know the product. So, so Tim, building on that, I, I would encourage customers to, and everybody on the call, go to the Aviva website, download the tool, you get the evaluation version for 40 hours. If you need more time, let us know, we'll extend it. We wanna make it easy for you. And, and then the big thing here is, make sure you contact your solutions PT salesperson, ask for a demo. If you got a project and you wanna see more, let us know, we're happy to, happy to help you out. And just one final point on that, guys, as well, is if you do download it, or when you download it, should I say, more to the point, and, and get up to speed with it on the, the demo, um, you can use the on-demand learning free of charge on the Aviva website as well. So uh, you can get up to speed, how you do those connections to databases, all the rest of it. It's, uh, it's very comprehensive. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks to all of our presenters. All did a brilliant job today. And hope to see you in our next webinar uh, next week, as you say, this is a 11 part uh, series. I can't remember what was the next one, Andy. Now it's gone out of my Viva mind. Viva Insight. It's a Viva Insight. So we talked about Edge today. Now we're going to talk about cloud. So join us next week and we're going to talk all about how you actually get this data into the cloud. All the best, everyone. Thanks, Cheers, everybody. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Tim. Dion. Thanks, guys.